The question is how worried should we be yeah. about a double dip and not only in housing but in the broader economy as well. Robert Schiller, he's a co-founder and chief economist in macro markets. He's well known also as the co-creator of the Case Schiller Housing Price Index. He's also a Yale economics professor. His latest book is called Animal Spirits and it's about the psychology and its effect on the markets and on the economy as well. So when you look at this housing number today, does this illustrate that uh, there can't necessarily be housing market stability, at least not right now, without that tax credit? Well, the tax credit interrupted what was a major slide in home prices. Homes peaked in 2006. They've been falling for three years. Well, except for the interruption that was caused you know, early last year with, the, with this new tax credit. The real question was, did that change the psychology of the market or didn't it? And now it's looking kind of weak, and so maybe it didn't. Maybe it was just a temporary boost. And so when people are talking about uh, perhaps extending the closing deadline for the tax credit to the end of September from the end of June, is that going to make any difference if the underlying numbers are still weak? Well, that seems to me just a matter of justice, I guess. It's not a big thing. Some people didn't manage to close in time, and we're giving them a little extra time, but it's not, it's not any major thing. The biggest uh, impact of it is to think, lead people to think that, well, maybe they'll start the credit again, or maybe, you know, Congress is trying to support the market and might be more favorable toward Fannie and Freddie or other issues like that. It, 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 people are just very uncertain about how supportive Congress will be and how the whole economy will look right now. Well, one of the things that still does remain supportive is low mortgage rates. Uh, is that not enough to get people interested in the market? They need another incentive on top of that? Well, it's definitely a good sign. I've been in the business of forecasting home prices for years. Uh, mortgage rates are not the major thing. You know, I think that's more important is employment. And right now, we still have a very high unemployment rate, and it's not coming down very fast. Uh, so, you know, it looks, it looks iffy at the moment. So we've talked about this before, a potential double dip in housing. Is that looking more likely? I mean, I know today's just one report, but is it looking more likely to you now? A little bit, yeah. You have to watch these things day by day. Uh, home prices, according to the S&P Case-Shiller Index, have been falling now for six months. But if you do seasonal adjustment, maybe that didn't really... It's in that in iffy range. Maybe we've already begun a double dip. Um, one other thing I want to ask about is new home sales, which are, those numbers are coming out tomorrow. They're expected to drop, not looking for a gain there. But if you look at the absolute level of new homes still being constructed, you still have the levels that are, are not entirely in line here. Is there any chance that we're going to actually have a shortage in, new ho in uh, inventory of new housing? Uh, <laughs> We are at a very low level of construction. We're kind of in a depression state uh, in terms of the housing uh, construction industry. Uh, that low level of supply will eventually have an impact on the market and, and bring prices up. But, you know, it, it doesn't have to come this year or next year. Uh, you know, most, uh, most forecasters of home prices, I have to say, because my company, Macro Markets, does a survey of them, most of them are benignly optimistic that home prices will go up at something like the rate of inflation. Not, not predicting any disaster. But, you know, that inventory still is a factor and it still, you know, um, it still hasn't come to a point where we can really look for big price increases. Uh, Bob, just quickly here, I mean, we did have the median price go up by 2.7 percent in today's report. So for how long can you have this situation where people are not buying homes but prices are rising, which seems to be sort of counterintuitive? Well, the median price can be affected by a lot of things. Notably, it's, it is much more seasonal than the, uh, the repeat sales index that I do with, uh, with Standard & Poor's. Uh, it tends to go up in the summer partly because families with big with children and uh, moving in uh, with the school year tend to have bigger houses and so those more expensive houses tend to sell in the in the months that would be timed for a move in September. All right, Bob, unfortunately we're out of time. Robert Schiller, of yeah. course, the uh, co-founder of the, as you reminded me, S&P case Schiller uh, Home <clears throat> Price Index, Ma Macro Markets Chief Economist, Yale professor as well. Thanks again for joining us. We appreciate it.